It's that time. I on MPI. This week's Eye on MPI is from Nordic, one of our favorite companies. Lydia, what is the right. Eye on MPI brought to you by DigiKey this, this week. week? All right, so I'm wearing my Nordic shirt because last time I did a Nordic. We've done a couple Nordic Eye on MPI. It's the rules. We wear the shirts of the And thing. they were like, hey, can you wear a Nordic? I was wearing a Particle shirt because Particle uses Nordic, but um, yeah. they were like, they sent us shirts. Send us nice no, shirts. Say, look, shirt. we got shirt. Okay, so this week's Eye on MPI is from Nordic. They emailed me actually and let me know about this new product they're coming out with. And I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. So this is the NPM1100. Um, so you probably know Nordic for their wireless stuff, their Bluetooth Low Energy, um, and their uh, short hop uh, mesh wireless networks. Uh, of course, we use the NRF52840 and the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. If you use a micro bit or other Blue Fruit boards, you've seen us use the NRF51, the NRF52832, um, the NRF 8001 ancient uh, Bluetooth low energy chip, but was, you know, at the time a, a great thing because it was SPI to Bluetooth. And uh, if we uh, check out, this is from iFixit, the uh, AirTag from Apple. It uses, if you see on the left there, if you zoom in, it has an NRF 52832. So um, obviously, you know, these, they're very well known for their wireless Bluetooth chips. That's also now cellular. They're doing some cellular. And... Um, one of the things that you notice quite quickly when you are dealing with Bluetooth and, and the NRF series is that folks that are using these chips need them to be um, very low power. Like low power usage is something that's really important to people because your chances are you're doing cellular, so it's battery powered. You're doing uh, BLE, so it's you know battery powered. And a lot of these things, especially like this AirTag, they send data um, once in a while, um, not often, and then they go to sleep in between. So you know power management is something that's um, very important, and I think c considering that their last product um, that they sold was uh, that we featured was the Power Profiler 2, um, it's clear that there's a lot of customers that are using Nordic chipsets and are having difficulty with like getting the performance and battery power that they're expecting. Right? They read the specifications and they're like, oh, it can do you know this many microamps or nanoamps sleep. Heck, I'm not getting that, and Nordic has to sort of reply and say, well, you know, you have to measure all of your power usage, and you have to go to sleep mode, and you have to, you know, use this kind of converter, and this, your quiescence being lost here and there. Obviously, the PPK2 was a tool that they were using in-house, and also their customers were using to try and um, analyze, you know, what are the power uses of their circuits. And I, I got this from their um, presentation on the NPM1100, and they're saying, look, it sounds, it might seem a little unusual that we're doing a power management chip. Uh, that's what the PM1100 is, but actually isn't because we are a power management IC company. A lot of the stuff we do is power management. Yes, we, of course, we do Bluetooth and we do Wi-Fi or we do uh, cellular and we do ARM cores, but inside of those we have um, power management systems because, we, again, we have to have such deep sleep modes, be able to wake up, do a measurement, advertise Bluetooth, and go back to sleep and last for a very long time on a coin cell. Uh, so the NPM1100, is, it's kind of a three-in-one um, power management chip. So the PM is for, NPM is for Nordic Power Management, 1100, I don't know, it's the first one, it's really the first one, and, you know, revision 00. zero. So inside, uh, starting from the left, there's a USB to battery charger. So it takes USB power in, right? USB-C or USB micro B or whatever, and it can charge a battery. You can change, uh, here it has a 400 milliamp battery charger, but it's actually adjustable. Uh, it's up to five, 400 milliamps, which is a fairly chunky battery. Most people use 100 or 50 to 100 to 200. You can, of course, tune it down, but it can do linear battery charging. And then on the top right, it can give you uh, unregulated power out from the USB or battery. So that's good for powering like your radio or like some LEDs or whatever high power stuff that you need where uh, the higher voltage, the better. And then at the bottom, there's a uh, buck DC DC converter that'll give you 150 milliamps out. So not a ton, but enough to run your wireless and a couple of accessories, maybe a little display, some buttons, OLED, what have you, a couple sensors. And it's also adjustable 1.8 to 3.0 volts, 3.0 volts out. And here is 
Uh, the schematic, you know, I, I grabbed from their um, eval board, you know, design. They had a couple of designs where they're like, here, copy the design for usage. So one thing to note uh, for this chip is that everything is pinstrapped. Um, so you'll note um, on the left, there's like ICHG pin and VTERM. Those are the two pins that you use to select whether it's a 4.2 or 4.1 voltage LiPo battery and the charge current as well. And on the right, uh, you see some LED outputs, um, but everything is basically pin strapped. So you don't use I2C to program it. You use resistors and, and GPIO pins if you want to configure it. Top left, you can see there's the D plus D minus pins. You're like, what's up with that? That's used um, so it can detect whether, you know, what current the charger can supply because, you know, Apple uses the D plus and D minus pins, and that's a standard to indicate how much current can be drawn. So it will respect that current if you connect those pins up. Um, and basically, it's a three in one. You've got your, um, you know, USB input, regulated output DC, DC, unregulated output, and battery charger. And it's really small, right? It's all in one. And so instead of having maybe two chips or three chips, you have one chip. Um, and here it is showing with the, basically the capacitors, a couple of 402 resistors to set the charge current and such. Most of the pins are just strapped. And then there's an inductor for um, the buck converter. Um, and so, you know, they did a case study in the presentation. They showed, look, you know, if you go from a, a, a buck converter usually is bigger and more expensive, but because we kind of combo it with your LiPo charger, um, you kind of get a two for one. It's the same price as just having one or the other. But with the DC-DC, even though it's bigger, right, you see the bottom right there, this, this solution is 23 millimeters squared instead of, um, you know, a, sim a simpler low dropout regulator, which is 12 millimeter because it doesn't need the inductor. Um, however, your battery life is double because um, you can squeeze more current out, especially if you're going to buck down to like 2 volts, 2.2 volts. You know, the Nordic chips can run very nicely at those, at those voltages. Um, you can suck more current out of that battery. You're, you're drawing less current out of the battery and you can go to much lower voltages. Uh, so, it's, you know, yes, it's designed to be used with the Nordic chips. Obviously, they're, they're promoting it for use with the NRF series chips, uh, the 91s, the 53s, the 52s. However, I'll say this chip is not just for use um, with those dev, uh, with that, their, their chipsets. You could, of course, use it with any chipset. It is agnostic to the wireless. Just, you know, they're, they're branching out into a new thing. It's meant as a sister product to their existing lines. But I, I don't think in any way you should think, oh, I can only use this with Nordic. No, you can use this with any project you want that um, you know, may need adjustable voltage output, uh, has a LiPo battery that needs charging, um, and you want to kind of have, oh, another thing that's very nice about this is it has a ship mode, so it can go into ultra low quiescent current. Um, the quiescent current is usually about like 800 nanoamperes typical, which is quite low, um, but it can go to half that in ship mode. So when you ship out a product to somebody, you, you don't want it running, but you also probably don't have an on-off switch because it's not very common to have anymore. In this case, you can use a button or a GPIO to get out of ship mode um, to wake up the, the regulator um, and, and don't, don't, don't drain your battery out completely. So when people get the product, it's basically ready to use the moment you get it. Uh, so that's the, the t bottom buttons there. All right. Not only is this efficient, Lady is efficient, but did you can get this to you efficiently? And it's in stock. Yeah. Right? I'm trying to do the NPIs that are available and in stock, and this one is in stock. So you can pick this up, the NPM 1100 and then CAA. There's also an eval board, which we showed the photo of. Um, mm, here, no, for a second. overhead real fast. Um, so that's it. This is the solution. So maybe I'll use the. Whoop. Sorry, I'll use the zoomer. Okay, there, we go. there you go. So that's the. This is the full solution. Uh, this is the chip. You need some input and output capacitors, obviously, because you're you want to have capacitors on the battery charging, on the input to the. Uh, Buck converter, this is the inductor, it's a little uh, chip scale inductor, and capacitor on the output. But that's it, it's a small CSP uh, scale chip, and then you can use, we'll zoom out, even more zoom in. Down here, there's little flippy switches you can uh, use to select. So it's a very nice little eval board. Uh, I'll note that this battery, I believe, is reverse 
wired from how Adafruit batteries are wired. Um, just looking for the ground pin, so just watch out for that. Check the documentation before you plug yeah. in one of our batteries. All right, that's all on PI this week. Hi, I'm MPI.